And what Descartes came up with in the rule of signs is he was able to determine that rather than dealing with the rational zeros, he was able to formulate a way for us to determine the real zeros, right? We have real and we have imaginary, right? It's either real or it's imaginary. Those are the only two that we're dealing with. So he said, if you take a look at the positive real zeros, what I want you to do is take the signs of each monomial. Remember a polynomial? Remember that crazy definition I said? A, um, a to the n, x to the n, plus a to the n, n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, right? Dot, dot, dot. A polynomial is a sum of monomials. So if you take the sign of each one of these monomials, and let's write them out. So up here, I have 3x cubed. We know that's a positive, right? So I say positive to negative to positive to positive. That's a bad marker. And what we notice is the signs of each one of my monomials, you can see they alternate from positive to negative and then negative to positive, right? So there's two times that they alternate from a different sign. So therefore, the number of positive real zeros, you're going to have two real positive zeros or zero real positive zeros. And some of you might say, well, wait a minute. All right, I understand getting the two, but why is, there also, why is it possible also for it to be zero? Because on Descartes' rule of signs, what it states is that the number of times that you alternate from a sign, that's the number of real zeros minus an even number. So if I take two and I subtract an even number, which would be two, I would get zero. So therefore, it's either two or it's zero. I'll show you how, to, how we will figure this out. Um, but there's going to be two possibilities. Now, to determine the negative, we have to do a little bit of mathematics. And our mathematics is rather than dealing with f of x, we're now going to deal with f of negative x. So if you guys remember from functions, if I have f of negative x, I'm now going to plug in negative x in for my function. So this will be 3 times negative x cubed minus 10 times negative x squared plus 13 times negative x plus 10. So when doing this, any negative number raised to an odd power is going to be negative. Negative x cubed times 3 will be a negative 3x cubed. Any negative number squared is going to be positive. Positive times a negative 10 will be a negative 10x squared. This uh, negative x times 13 is a negative 13x plus 10. Again, we drop down the signs. Negative, 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 positive. So therefore, you guys can see that we only have one change in signs. Right? Yes? OK, um, remember when you're doing negative, remember you have to follow the rules of uh, the order of operations. So you square the number first, then you multiply. Right? Um, so now when we're looking at this, um, dot, dot, dot. so now you can see, all right, there's one change in signs. Therefore, there's one negative real 0. But if you subtract an even number, you can't, if you subtract 2 from 1, you're going to have negative 1. You can't count negative 1 real zeros, right? can't have negative real zeros. You can have, a ne you can have a zero that is negative, though. So therefore, we'll have one real negative zero. All right, and we're going to learn in the next problem how we can uh, determine how we're going to use this. Okay, why is this important, how we're going to use this? Um, as far as looking at your guys' test, you will have 